I want to talk to you about something serious. Um, and I don't know how composed I'm going to be when I do this video. A lot of you guys see me, my personality on YouTube, and it's me. It's me, but it's me on my good days, okay? It's me on my good days. It's me as when I'm feeling good, I'm looking good. Because um, I've talked about CES a lot. I've talked about, not a lot. I, I did a vlog about it that one time to tell you guys about my condition and how my daughter started me on YouTube. It was really my YouTube journey and um i mentioned depression that i was depressed for pretty much two to four years um but i want to talk to you a little bit about that because i feel like you know depression is such a key thing that everybody's talking about now you know and i, I for one because I'm such a happy-go-lucky person and I I'm so much like my mother because I want to find the positive in something I don't want to be the negative in something but there can be a bad side to that like me being diagnosed with that and my life being utterly altered like completely <sighs> you not being the same person anymore like when a person that's so happy and finds the positive in almost anything and you can't. And I think the thing that was so hard for me was nobody understood it. You know what I mean? Because Stacy's always so happy. So they wanted Stacy to be happy and I just wanted to just wanted to fall in a hole. I just wanted to go into a hiding place <laughs> and not be found. I feel like, and I, I went, you know how some people are meant for counseling and, and you should get help. You should seek help if you are in a place of just darkness. God, always talk to God. He's the best therapist but if that isn't it sometimes people that are surrounded by you may not be enough those people that are so close to you unfortunately are going through the same fight that you're going through I think our problem me and, me and my husband's issue was the fact that we both knew that old Stacy so we both were waiting for that old Stacy and I gave up hope I lost faith that she would ever come back and because he kept waiting on her I, I got worse because I was like I'm not her I don't know if I'll ever be her and now I'm in I'm in a competition with the now Stacy and the then Stacy So I put a happy face on that I was that Stacy. And after a while I couldn't do it. So I would, you know, sometimes I would just go in my room and cry. And then when Craig would come in, he would ask me what was wrong. I didn't want to tell him. Because the old Stacy didn't do that. So I just would kick him out. I'd push him up and I made a wall. So then I, I decided to get a psychologist, you know, to someone to talk to and just express it all and spill it out. Because I tried to tell my friends they didn't understand and then some of them did. But it was like I'm getting these conflicting conversations. Because again, they knew that old Stacy. I needed somebody with a fresh plate that didn't know me. That didn't know Craig. That didn't know and compare and say, oh, well, he's doing the best he can. Or you're doing the best you can. Or you can check it up in... I mean, I went on the outs with one of my friends because sometimes when somebody's going to tell things so difficult that all you know is by reading it and in so many words you're saying, suck it up. Mm -mm. It's better if you just shut up and don't say anything. I realized I just didn't talk to people. I didn't really, because I put that face on. 
because I put that that facade that I was happy when I wasn't. And it never hit me that I put that facade on. And I know my husband, I know my kids knew I wasn't happy. I know. Because I went to Washington for my mom's 60th birthday and every time I talked to my husband, he's like, are you staying up there? Are you going to leave me? And I was like, where is this coming from? And I was like, I just want to get away from North Carolina. I just wanted to get away. I wanted to celebrate my mom's birthday and I wanted to get away from all the bull so I can visit my mom and just kind of get away from my horrendous life. And unfortunately, I had forgotten that my mom and my sisters, well, my mom saw me, but my sisters hadn't seen me since my surgery. So... <laughs> when I went to them and I tried to explain it all. I love them to death and they were like, Stacy, why are you limping? And I was like, oh, it's because of the surgery. You know, this is just what I'm left with now. And I, again, the face, you know, I put the facade that everything was fine. It's just the limp, don't worry about it. And then when I felt like, okay, I can share a little cause they're my sisters, you know, they're my mom and my mom knew everything. So she knew everything besides the, no, she even knew about the, the number two incident she knew it because she was there through it all so so she knew way more than anybody and uh when I tried to share it they just giggled because I told a joke you know and it wasn't that it wasn't meant to be funny I told the joke because this was on this face that Stacy's okay I can laugh it off I'm healing when in fact I was just oh, denial you know what I mean like I act like that Stacy I'll become that Stacy instead of facing it and saying you're not happy you're not happy and that's such a painful subject to say that is such a painful sentence because for me I'm I'm always happy. I try to always be happy. I try to just be positive and think positive and have faith that it's going to be okay. I, I couldn't see the light at the end of the tunnel. I couldn't see. I was like, God, my daughter has sickle cell anemia. Why would you give me this? Do you really think I could bear it? Because <sighs> I did. I did not think I'm as strong as you think I am. <sighs> and I think looking at it now. And you guys have to forgive me because 9 out of the 10. <sighs> I'm, I'm over this. Or I'm, I'm building towards being over it. Nine out of the ten, I'm crying when I say these things because this is the first time I've ever said it out loud that my voice can hear because it's always been in my mind. These are thoughts that I've had in my mind. These are secrets that me and God know and no one else. And it's, it's cleansing, but it's painful to hear me say that. But I did, I lost faith. I was like, God, I can't, I can't bear this. I am not this strong. I am not as strong as you think I am. This is too much. And then I just thought, you know, with the support group for CES in reading, the trials and tribulations people went through, the spouses leaving them, the some of them are paralyzed for the rest of their lives, or some have like no feeling from the waist down where at least I got some back. 
men and women can no longer be sexually active with their partners. It's not as bad. My says, but I can work full time. And I think black women, women of color, it's it's hard for us because we have to be so strong. You know what I mean? Society has this whole huge thing that black women are so strong that we can do anything and we have a thick skin so we can't get hurt quickly you know or you know that you know we don't cry we're not vulnerable we're not women we're like a man come on we're vulnerable i mean and that doesn't help that doesn't help because it's bull i can't cry in front of my husband because i don't want to look weak i have to be strong for my family I have to be strong for myself but I can't always be strong and sometimes I don't want to be sometimes I just want to cry and be moody and be sad But I think, I don't think that's bad. I think I'm allowed to. I think my problem is that I put that wall up when I'm like that. Like, Craig came in and I just didn't want him to see me like this. And it's... It's like I don't want to put that face on and I feel like I would have to put that face on that old Stacy face when it comes in. In in this moment, this time where I am, I don't want to put that face on. I just want to feel this emotion. Accept how I feel. Exhale how I feel in the emotion say it and let it go and just cleanse myself of this feeling and I'll feel better I feel better now that I've done this sometimes you have to cry sometimes you have to mourn those days you can't get back those times the loss that you have you have to mourn it because if you don't it just builds inside it just builds inside and then you create this wall this blockage from your family your friends you want to end it with this and say a song god led me to win when i felt alone when I felt I was at my wits end. Oh, I trust you. That's it, I trust you. The things to do is find yourself in a storm. While in that storm, it seems like everyone who you thought you could count on has, has walked away. Sometimes it seems like even God himself has forgotten about you. But in spite of that, you will still be able to lift your hands and say, Lord, I trust you. I can't see. And I can't feel your touch. I will trust in you, Lord. I love you so much. My nights may be low. And I feel so low. My trust is in you. I surrender to you. Painful thoughts through my mind. And I wonder how I will make it through the time. I trust you. It's not easy. Sometimes the pain in my life makes you seem so far away. That song. 
has taken me through sometimes when I am just like today at my lowest. That song sets me right. It's therapy. It's I'm praying that somebody out there that you may not go through the same situation that I'm going through. You may not be in the same situation I'm going through, but you're you're at that point. You're in that dark space. You don't know where to go, what to do, and there's no one around you. Get down on your knees and you pray. And if you've never prayed before, that's all right. Close your eyes and just call on his name. Go to counseling. Talk to someone. Someone that's not of your space. And, and be honest. 